Us live from Hartford Healthcare Studios is Jeffrey Flax, President and CEO of Hartford Healthcare. Thank you for being with us. And what a story that was. Let's talk about that first. Oh, Lisa, mm. what a great story. Uh, to see one of our own, to see Jay, uh, he, he, he was in grave danger uh, and really in jeopardy. And, and to see uh, our staff, our physicians, the respiratory therapists, the nurses, everyone involved in his care, uh, to, to see him come back from that and now to, to be returning to well uh, is enormously gratifying and it gives hope to everybody uh, and it inspires everyone and to see that raw emotion uh, that, that's what we do and it's why we do this and it's just so amazing a really incredible story and we hope that there's going to be more and more of these examples as every day goes forward and you're right he was in such grave danger and now he's going home to his family tomorrow so you've discharged 450 covid-19 patients let's talk about that i mean they all weren't as sick as jay but that is a lot of people that you uh, got better and sent home you know, thankfully more than 80% of the people who have been admitted to our hospitals across Hartford healthcare have transitioned to home mm -hmm. uh, so there's so many wonderful examples of people who've been able to beat this uh, and at the same time, there is mortality, and gosh, it, it breaks our heart uh, to, to, to see that the, the loss that's being experienced in the community. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the vast majority of people are successfully being treated. And when you see stories like Jay, our physicians today spoke about how it means so much to them because they realize what they're capable of doing, and it gave them even more motivation to keep you know, doing this every day and fighting this fight and innovating because uh, they're helping people come back from some very difficult circumstances. And we are going to have a lot more with Jay coming up tonight at 5 p.m. in our news. Uh, let's talk about mobile testing right now. I understand you have a pilot program coming to the most vulnerable communities. Tell us about that. Lisa, we're so excited about this. Uh, this this uh, pilot, we're, we're, so next week we'll be doing mobile testing. Uh, the partnership that we've put in place to increase the state's testing by more than 80 percent now gives us some capacity uh, that we're going to deploy to mobile testing and we're going to bring uh, a van uh, that's going to be properly outfitted with all the necessary protections for our staff and logistics that we need to put in around it so that we can go to nursing homes, that we can go to, to uh, um, hotels that are presently housing people who are homeless and go to where populations and people are most vulnerable and bring the testing to them. So it's a huge advancement. It's a necessary advancement, and it's one that will be happening here in Connecticut starting next week. All right, let's talk about virtual health visits. My mom had one with a Hartford Health Care provider this morning. She said it felt more productive than an office visit. How are you guys doing with the virtual visits? You know, it's interesting. We often talk about the need to return to normal. This is one of the places we don't want to return to normal. Uh, telehealth has been around for years. We were one of the earliest organizations in the country to do it, and we've been utilizing it in specific areas for about five years. But it caught on very slowly, and most people still thought that going to uh, the physical office visit was kind of the gold standard. But through this crisis now, we've done about 50,000 wow. telehealth visits. Uh, we're doing thousands every day, uh, and it's another way to provide access. This is about access to care, and we can provide telehealth all hours of the day. Uh, we can do it with all types of cultural sensitivities. There's, it gives us many new avenues uh, in terms of how to design and deliver care. So I'm hopeful as time goes forward, we're going to continue to see this be part of the compendium of the way we care for the community. All right. And finally, tell us about, I understand you sent a thank you letter to everyone. What was that about and what has the response been? So we, we have 30,000 staff members who work with us at Hartford HealthCare. And, Everyone is working today in our organization. They're heroes, and particularly our physicians, our nurses, our respiratory therapists, our nurses' aides, everyone who works in food services, environmental services. Healthcare is a team sport, and there's so many people who are showing courage and bravery. And I, I wanted to, as the CEO of this organization, to send a card to them personally in their home, and I wanted to not only address them and thank gratitude for what they're doing, but also thank their families. Because everyone who supports a person who's working in healthcare today, mm -hmm. uh, their loved ones, their partners, are providing immense service to us. And I wanted to recognize the sacrifices they're making and to express gratitude. I mean, it's such an unusual time, unprecedented set of circumstances. Uh, and this was just another way of many that we want to show our immense personal gratitude for what people are doing today. Oh, well said. All right, Jeffrey Flex, President and CEO of Hartford Healthcare, thanks as always for taking the time. We appreciate it.
Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you.